Welcome to the high school auditorium. May I have a motion to return to the public session? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. At this time, uh, it's time for public participation agenda items only. Mrs. Callis, did we have any write-ins? No, we do not for agenda items. Thank you. And at this time, I uh, look to my fellow board members to see if we have any committee reports. Yes, I have two, uh, President Kallstrom. Uh, thank you and good evening. Uh, I have two committee reports, the first being from our latest technology committee meeting. There we discussed the many lessons learned and successes accomplished by the district over the past and current school year. Thanks to the leadership in our technology department helmed by Chris Hyde, all students who requested a device have won, totaling over 1,000 devices distributed to students and families. Currently, there is no family in need of a device. We also have a new website at rpsd.org, which I highly recommend you check out. It's more user-friendly, both on desktop and cellularly. The district will also be coordinating a return of devices before the end of the school year. Upcoming projects include an expansion of the keyless entry project, a firewall upgrade, security cameras outside the elementary schools, and web-based training for staff and parents. Again, a huge thank you to Chris Hyde and his team of experts. Your resilience and fast action, fast action helped us make this challenging year a lot easier for our students and families. As for the equity committee, there was a large discussion around, around Juneteenth. Juneteenth is a 155 year old holiday celebrating the emancipation of African Americans from slavery in the US. It is celebrated on June 19th. The name is a combination of the words June and 19th because on that date in 1865, Major General Gordon Granger of the Union Army landed in Galveston, Texas and informed slaves that the, that the Civil War had ended and slavery had been abolished. Information provided by CNBC. The committee and administrators are planning to commemorate the event through numerous resources for the respective schools. On June 18th, students will be encouraged to wear red and will have access to learning resources that will include reading material and a short video shown in morning programming. We invite the entire community to participate and hope this day can be a celebration for us all. Thank you, Madam President. Those are my reports. Thank you. Do we have any other committee reports? Seeing none, I'd like to turn the microphone over to our superintendent, Mr. Garrido. Thank you, Mrs. Skallstrom. Good evening, board members. Good evening, audience. Uh, to, tonight, we actually have a very special presentation that I will be introducing in a couple of minutes. But before I do that, I just want to give an update on our reopening efforts and our reopening plans. As everyone knows, at this time, we are, our students are attending school five days a week, single session, uh, with afternoons uh, remote. We will continue uh, with that schedule to the end of this school year. However, I don't know if anybody has heard uh, the governor speak the last couple of weeks. Uh, he uh, has made several comments that students will have or parents will have no remote option come September. So the district will be planning full days with uh, all students in person in, in September. Uh, as, as of now, that's the way it's going. Obviously, we have learned over the past 14 months that uh, things can change and there could be another change uh, before August. But right now, the district will be planning full days of school with all students attending in person. Also, I wanted to uh, make sure that everyone is aware, uh, although there has been uh, Comments also by the governor regarding uh, the mask policy. Schools continue, and he made it very clear today that schools is one of the organization that masks must still be worn. So we will continue. We have not received any guidance from DOE regarding any of these uh, orders or reduction of orders that the governor has been um, has been. Com uh, making comments on over the past couple of weeks. As soon as we uh, receive it, uh, I will send information to the staff as well as to the parents. But right now, schools are still under the order that masks must be worn. And as I said to you at this time, 
Uh, it is really my privilege uh, to present to you uh, three people are here in the uh, audience. And I know Mr. Salvo is going to present the, the coaches, but uh, Mr. Salvo, our director of curriculum, who is going to uh, give an introduction uh, in terms of uh, our ELA math and science curriculum and the great things that are going on in the district. And I could not be happier. And Ms. Savo can attest to this. Uh, eight years ago, when I came into this district, we started talking about instructional coaches and the benefit and the importance of having instructional coaches work with teachers, work in the classroom, work in that curriculum and model uh, different type of instructional methods and, and what benefit this will be for our schools and, and most importantly for our students. And we finally have them. And I can tell you that we have found the right people for these positions. And, and, and again, I, I don't wanna take the thunder away from Mr. Salvo because he is gonna present, uh, but I am very, very happy. I'm proud uh, that we are doing with the work that is being done. Uh, from the curriculum office and from instructional coaches. So, Mr. Sabo, I'm going to give you the opportunity to introduce these great young ladies that are seated here in front of us. And I know Ms. Ms. Sigmund wasn't able to be here, but she's also going to present as well. So, Mr. Sabo, the floor is yours. I think, I think that would probably be wise for you to like to see the presentation, not me talking about it. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Is this working? Okay, great. Um, as Mr. Garrido said, this is certainly an exciting night to be able to present uh, not only an update from the curriculum office, but also to um, for that update to really include um, coaches, which as Mr. Garrido said, we've been talking about and preparing for the introduction to the roles to the district for quite some time. Um, there's always a lot to update from the curriculum office. There's, there's always a lot of projects ongoing, um, but I will tell you that tonight, what we're doing is the speed and the accuracy and the, the execution of a lot of things that we've done over the past few months with the introduction of language, a language arts coach, a math coach, and a number of other teacher leader positions who are not here tonight, um, but I don't, don't want to diminish their work as well. Um, the amount of people that are invested in and pushing the district further is just incredible. And, and really a lot of kudos goes to those teachers that stepped out into coaching roles or took on other roles outside of their normal duties. It's a lot, a lot is on the shoulders of the teachers who are doing the work. Um, one of the things that struck a chord right from our interviewing for the coaching is something that, that you see the picture of all the, the facades of each of the schools. Um, this was something that our math coach, Mrs. Burgeski put together early on, I think actually might've been part of the interview process, but that has struck a chord of that we really truly believe the elementary schools are the foundation for our students. We prepare them with a good strong foundation to be successful as they go through our school systems. And not only is this a nice looking graphic, but I believe that Mrs. Mrs. Brzezki, Mrs. Rango Correa and all the teacher leaders, they really believe this. And I think that we've, we've taken everything we do to another level that is really just in impacting students in the classroom tremendously. Um, so tonight, the objectives are to provide a brief update on the 2021 curricula and instructional support initiatives. Um, I wanted to share just a few examples of how these initiatives are impacting our students in the classroom, because that's, that's the ultimate goal. It's not for teachers to feel supported, it's for teachers to be supported by coaches in order to accomplish more in the classroom with our students. Um, and Three of our teacher leaders, Mrs. Brzezki is here this evening, Mrs. Valentina Arango, our ELA coach is here this evening, and Kristen Hickman, our K-8 science coordinator, um, prepared a video to update you on what she's doing in the world of science. Um, 
as you can tell, there are a couple of comments here, but these, these are comments that I've collected from um, administrators, from teachers, from colleagues throughout the district over the last couple of weeks, just to kind of get their perspective on the coaches. And um, a couple of themes about having in-house experts and having someone who understands what day-to-day -day life is in the classrooms of Roselle Park has been instrumental in moving things forward quicker. Um, the rigor and volume of text that we set out to increase in our language arts curriculum, that leaves a lot of interpretation about how to do that well, especially this year, because we wrote curriculum to be rigorous, to be challenging, to be graded appropriate, aligned to the standards, but we also wrote our curriculum for this September to be our regular curriculum, not, not curriculum expected to be diminished because of the pandemic. We wrote our curriculum as we wanted to stand moving into the future, which has left a lot of interpretation. So how to get that, those diverse texts at higher reading levels, how to, to have students be successful at that required a lot of adjustment this year, um, which we've done successfully. We've also seen that teachers are feeling that we're not just connecting classes at the high school and beyond, but we're making meaningful connections, that there's someone to connect those dots between how this novel can also play on themes in a different, totally unrelated course, and we can connect that. So when students go from a, a technology-based class to an ELA class to a social studies class, there's common themes and common language and common, common instructional points that the teachers have discussed, and it's really the language arts coaches who are connecting, making those connections. Another, I think I lost our camera here, sorry. Uh, another, another big area of, of need has been to iron out those transition years. Kids, kids, our students go from fifth to sixth grade, our students go from eighth to ninth grade, and that really comes down to communication between levels, between teachers with our coaches and our teacher leaders have really emphasized that communication and really speaking elementary language to middle school and, and speaking middle school language to elementary so that they understand each other a little bit more than they did before we had these roles. Um, in the area of science, claims, evidence, and reasoning is something coming straight from the standards. It's the way scientists think and talk about their work. Our students from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade in science classes are behaving and acting and using the language of scientists. It's not just, it's not just something that's written in standards. It's something our students are living day in and day out in the classroom. Um, and lastly, implementing and supporting change successfully We've had more change this year. We've taken on more challenges than we ever have from a curricular standpoint, from an assessment standpoint, from getting everyone on the same page as, as best we possibly can. And we've gotten so much accomplished despite the challenges of a pandemic. And I, I attribute a lot of that to the teacher leaders that we have and the coaches that are gonna tell you a little bit more about our initiative in ELA, math and science this evening. So with that, I will turn the presentation over, algebra or early exposure and advanced opportunity to Mrs. Brzezinski, our, our math coach. Hello, good evening, everybody. Hi, Ms. Fiorito. Hi, Ms. Callis and the board. Um, early exposure and advanced opportunities was something that I was presented with. Um, sorry, I'm short. Sorry. Um, and I jumped in both feet and I'll show you what we've been doing. Um, we've had an acceleration summary, enrichment opportunities going on, curriculum updates and an assessment schedule, and then data analysis and standard-based intervention, and to be summer remediation soon. Um, first few days and months, really, I wanted to get together with my colleagues and collaborate on, on how we accomplish this advancement. Um, it took fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, even high school teachers to get together through Zooms and really work with each other, work with me to figure out what our priorities are and how do we make this happen as soon as possible um, and be equitable for everybody involved. So our plan for that time frame was to prioritize what would be on a state test and then move towards our algebra for all in eighth grade. Um, how we did that is I created a bunch of spreadsheets, <laughs> one being on how to prioritize and vision and the big ideas topics. Those are our two texts at the elementary, middle and high school level. Um, take a look at them, expand them, condense them, reorganize them so that we are reinforcing those academics we need so that these seventh graders are prepared to take algebra. And we even have some sixth graders who are prepared to take algebra 
in our enrichment opportunities. Um, our top performers in both eighth grade and sixth grade are going to have the opportunity to advance themselves a course level. What that looked like in the school year, uh, we took our little babies who basically never even got out of fifth grade and got them ready to take for the first time ever in Roselle Park, seventh grade algebra. So we have those awesome group of students doing that independently with the help of a great teacher, Mrs. Maurer. Uh, recently, I took a look at data and got the eighth graders, our top performers again. I wound up getting all, all the kids who were eligible to sign up to go ahead and do this. They're going to take uh, algebra on their own over the summer, placing them into geometry in high school. Um, and then uh, we have our fifth graders just completed their pre-assessment uh, that places them in pre-algebra for sixth grade, meaning they will take the course if successful, seventh grade algebra, eighth grade geometry, and then beyond. Um, those results I just reviewed with the fifth grade teachers, they show us what we need to do um, right away at the beginning of the year, super valuable information. <clears throat> When I looked over the curriculum, the first thing that I started with was our standards progression. How does algebra look in kindergarten and how does it progress through seventh grade, making sure that we are equitable in what everybody is receiving, making sure that our honors courses are in fact honors and rigorous and the course title, the content. Um, come, come, ugh, sorry. With this comes a common assessment and um, data analysis. I needed to be careful to make sure that all of our topics through our Envision text and our Big Ideas text that aligned with algebra were being assessed, analyzed, and reviewed. The new curriculum at the middle school um, has additions of a new sixth grade uh, math pre-algebra course, an enhanced sixth grade regular course, um, an enhanced seventh grade pre-algebra course and an additional algebra class for seventh grade. And then next school year, um, 22, 23, we'll have a geometry um, opportunity for our eighth graders. At the elementary level, we had to add an additional unit to third grade, fourth grade, earlier algebra exposure, and then fifth grade, we reorganized our topics to align to um, standards and grouping the information that the students were manipulating so that there was a progression um, and better ways to intervene throughout the year. A support program we put into place is Happy Numbers for K to 1. And then onto my data analysis, I sprinkled it a little bit between uh, the start and the finish here. Um, I'm looking at those numbers, I'm utilizing our common assessments, I'm utilizing Linkit to really make sure that we're making conscious decisions. Um, we had the standard driven, the standard based instruction in the middle of the year. And then we'll also be looking at that data right now to plan for our summer remediation. Um, and now we have that. Hello everyone, thank you for having us here today. I'm Valentina Rango Correa. Um, so today I'll be talking a little bit about the ELA K through three curriculum work that is um, currently being done. The ELA four to 12 novel based curriculum, the assessment and data collection, and lastly, the RPSD K to 12 text demographics report. So the um, current ELA um, K through three curriculum is being written by um, a few of the teachers in those grades. Um, as you can see, they're working really closely together to make sure that there is a good flow um, between kindergarten through third grade. And this ties really well into the fourth through 12. So for the kindergarten, there is a large phonics component and beginning readers. <clears throat> there's also an intro to literacy structures in grade one. Um, there's phonics as well, but it is the grade that has the biggest emphasis on reading. It is the grade where students are expected to um, build um, or go up more steps in the reading scale. And then they build on literacy structures. In grade two, we are continuing phonics, um, building guided reading, um, continuing guided reading groups, strategy groups, and in independent reading. 
and grade three is our transition into the ELA based um, novel based curriculum. So this is the general structure of the four to 12 grades four to 12 ELA novel based curriculum In grades four to 12 there is a novel based curriculum that is supported with um, multimodal pair texts. The pair texts include, but are not limited to nonfiction, poetry, essay, and other multimodal texts. The core novels are situated within thematic units of study. Um, this year for assessment and data collection, we administered for both math and ELA, link it form A, B, and C. This is a NJSLS standard based assessment. Um, the teachers at the high school are currently working on an end of the year assessment. It is teacher created. It is a teacher created assessment that is one assessment across the course and it is NJSLS standards based. And this is happening in ELA math and science. So for the RPSD K through 12 text demographics report, um, we are looking at books as mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors. Um, when students look at books as mirrors, they can see themselves and their own experiences reflected in the book. When they see it as windows, they can learn through the book about other people's people, places, things, and experiences. And through sliding glass door um, perspective, students can enter into the book world through their imagination. So um, the demographics, the RPSD K-12 demographics report um, was actually an inspiration with Ms. Callis, um, with Ms. Callis's um, help. And um, this is a graphic that really helped us to put together the report. Um, this is a, an illustration that um, highlights the diversity in children's books um, that were published in 2018. So this is books that were published in the US, not um, indicative of Roosevelt Park, but just in general in the US. And as you can see, um, the representation in terms of racial demographics um, differs greatly in different um, categories, racial categories. So when we put together um, this, as you can see, this is just grades nine to 12, but we did this work um, all through from third grade uh, on to 12th. And as you can see, a lot of the, the novels um, were broken down or we, uh, we did this work in terms of um, what is the, de the demographic um, report for the protagonist and minor characters in the book, but also we took the demographic information of the writers of, and the authors of the book. Um, this is that data information from three to 12, and this is combined into a pie chart to see what our current text demographics are for protagonists and minor and secondary characters in the books. And as you can see, well, um, a lot of progress has been made, especially at the higher um, middle school and high school levels. There's been a, a conscious push to make sure that our, the demographics in the books are more representative of our student body. Um, and this also serves for the teachers to make uh, conscious decisions when they choose the multimodal pair texts um, and the curriculum writers when they are um, writing those pair texts into the curriculum. And then, thank you. All right, thank you both for your sharing. Um, before I move on to science to share Ms. Hickman's words, um, I just wanted to acknowledge that the amount of work that Mrs. Brzezki and Mrs. Arango Correa have done, um, it's almost unfair to ask them to summarize that in five minutes because there is an enormous amount of projects. And I'll tell you that with Mrs. Brzezki's ability to manage spreadsheets far beyond mine, She's involved with a lot of projects and with Mrs. Rango dealing with language arts with everybody is incredibly passionate about every aspect of their program from the book, from how they read it, when they read it and what they say about it. There's a lot of passion when it comes to ELA teaching um, and between Mrs. Burjeski wrangling all the math teachers to make incredible changes quickly as we've done this year and Mrs. Rango doing the same thing with ELA. Um, they've moved mountains 
um, in short periods of time with not only getting massive amount of things done, but having the teachers behind them cheering them on and saying, what a great job we're doing. This is exciting. I can't wait to next year when things normalize because we've got our curriculum in order. Um, to hear that across the two most the two big major content areas from teachers from kindergarten all the way through the high school is truly amazing. So thank you both for all your work. All right, moving on to science. Um, Ms. Hickman is not able to be with us tonight, but she did prepare a video for us. And to add on, just to acknowledge some other science work, um, also coordinating science at the high schools, our very own teacher of the year for Union County, Dennis Degunas, has been instrumental in um, not getting, we're not getting new programs at the high school, but we certainly are making changes to make sure that students are exposed to content prior to the 11th grade science test and making sure that if they learn something in ninth grade, that's not the last time they see it before taking an assessment on it in 11th grade. So there's been a lot of work to make sure that concepts were embedded in courses that, that may not typically fit just to make sure that they had a little bit of a connection and a review before that 11th grade test. Um, one last little anecdote with the science. Um, Mrs. Hickman was tasked with rolling out the new science to elementary school. And as you heard earlier, Mrs. Brzezewski is making adjustments in math. Mrs. Rango is making correct connection, ugh, improvements to the curriculum in language arts. So for our K through three teachers who teach all subjects, they're being hit by three different areas with significant changes. And Ms. Hickman was the one that had the last. 
um, in her initial rollout of the new program, new STEM kits, new robust materials they're going to have for science, she started to realize that the teachers had some angst about all these new things coming in September. And after a conversation on Thursday, Monday morning, she emailed me and said, I think I solved the problem. All the teachers wanted X, Y, or Z, and basically rewrote the entire curriculum K-5 to structure it so that the less hands-on of the three units starts in the beginning of the year, so they have time to get back into the classroom, get back into the normal swing of things next year. Um, and she made that change based on her interactions with K-3 teachers, um, which went over very well in terms of a simple change that just required a lot of work on one person's plate to do it, um, and got it done and all of our teachers are, you know, that's contributing to the reason why they're excited about these changes as opposed to, um, you know, the way it could go and does go in a lot of school districts outside of Rosehill Park. So, um, moving on, just a couple other areas I'll just brush up on very quickly, but these are other big projects that we're going on right now. Um, in the area of computer science, we've introduced Project Lead the Way courses at the middle school and high school level. And right now we're in the process of exploring if it's possible to bring Project Lead the Way down to elementary to give students an a unit of exposure of Project Lead the Way in both fourth and fifth grade for next year. Um, we're in the midst of seeing if that's realistic for September. Our library program, um, headed up by Mrs. Lemke, our media specialist here at the high school, has done a great job of outlining K through 12 curriculum for language art uh, for library program. But she's also been connecting with every all the other teacher leaders to make sure that there's not redundancy. We have such a limited amount of time for our library program that we want to make sure that if she's hitting on something that's already taught at a grade level or introducing a concept to students, if they've already seen it or heard it, she wants to make sure that they see it and hear it in a way that resonates with them so that it's, it impacts their learning. Uh, health and PE, there's a lot of emphasis as we're updating the curriculum on lifelong health and physical fitness um, activities so that students can learn something that is not team sport driven in school and take it with them for their for their long, lifelong um, passion in that area but trying to expose students to lots of different activities not just team sports our art and music and dance curriculum which i apologize is not on there uh, is also being updated across the board to align to the new standards um, one of the biggest parts of that project is an instrumental music curriculum to span elementary through the high school um, and the entire music department is rallying around the idea of we're going to make sure that this curriculum beefs up what, what students who leave the elementary school can do in middle school. We're going to wow you with what we can do in middle school. And that our program at the high school is going to build on that, um, that success at the younger level so we can keep improving at the high school level. Um, and lastly, the last update of something that's very exciting. Um, next year, we're going to introduce um, a requirement from the state, but I think that the way we're doing it is, is why I'm excited. Financial literacy will now be a cycle course next year at the middle school. Um, from the amount of different investment from banks, commercial banks, and financial institutions, there's so much financial, uh, financial literacy curriculum out there. Um, the teachers that's taken the lead on, on authoring those courses, I think, has identified some of the most fun, engaging, and interesting ways to learn about the basics of, of handling your own money, um, which I think is, is a great thing that all of our middle school students will be exposed to each year um, in our curriculum starting in September. So with that, I know we went very fast through a whole lot of updates, um, but again, it's nice for me to be up here and to celebrate all those accomplishments, but none of it happens without the teachers that are taking on quite a bit of extra work without our teacher leaders, uh, like two of our coaches here tonight. Um, but lastly, the support of the Board of Ed, the superintendent, BA, everybody here tonight, we really thank you for your support to have these, to have these uh, roles and to have all these uh, updates that we're doing, because we know it takes, at the bottom line, it takes investment and it takes investment from our board. So we thank you very much for all that support to have these projects going. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you for that presentation. We appreciate it. At this time, uh, we'd like to go on to policy agenda items one and two. Number one, district policy, second reading. Number two, district policies adoption. Motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Thank you. Second. May I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. 
Mr. Fernandez. Yes. Mr. Harms. Yes. Mix Infante. Yes. Ms. Kirkland. Yes. Ms. McLeod Cato. Yes. Ms. Quinsella. Uh, abstention from 1A and yes. And President Crossroom. Yes. On to personnel, agenda items three through nine and addenda item one. Number three, staff appointments. Number four, staff resignations. Number five, medical leave of absence extension request. Number six, Title I AP tutorial program revision. Number seven, professional development. Number eight, summer camp revision additional staffing list. Number nine, summer technology help. Addenda under personnel, number one, staff appointments. May I have an approval, uh, a motion to approve the personnel section? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Harms. Yes. Ms. Mix Infante. Yes. Ms. Kirkland. Yes. Ms. McLeod Cato. Yes. Ms. Quintella. Yes. And President Crossroom. Yes, but I abstain for number eight. Business. Aden agenda items 10 through 16 and addenda item two. 10 approval of bills 11 approval of minutes 12 budget transfers 13 bus evacuation drills 14 private sale 15 middle college program 16 summer camp handbook addenda Included is uh, number two, 2021-2022 Joint Transportation Agreement. May I have a motion to approve the business section? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Fernandez. Yes. Mr. Harms. Yes. Mix Infante. Yes. Ms. Kirkland. Yes. Ms. McLeod Cato. Yes. Ms. Quintella? Yes. And President Carlstrom? Yes. Continuing business. And at this time, also new business. Um, just want to remind my fellow board members that we're invited to march at the Memorial Day Parade this Monday coming up. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please let us know so that we can uh, contact uh, Rupert at, at the Casano Center, and uh, we're going to line up at Sherman School, and the parade will kick off and proceed down Grand Avenue right on Chestnut to the Veterans Memorial Library. Anyone else have any new business? Madam President. Yes. I just want to uh, thank Mr. Salvo and the coaches today. I mean, that presentation was excellent. Uh, as a parent and a board member, I just want to thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, it hasn't been an easy year, but uh, you know, the, the obstacles didn't stop your, you or your team. And, and that's just a testament to what you guys have been doing. We appreciate it greatly. <laughs> With uh, young children, I figured they, they've worked hard enough that I wanted to get them out of us. So I'll have to pass it hey, on. It's on the record so they can, uh, they, they can always watch it later. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. Okay, any other new business? Seeing none, we'll go to the public participation. Each member of the public may speak a maximum of three minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Seeing no in-person public coming to the microphone, Mrs. Callis, did we receive any written public comments? Yes, we've received two. 
The first one was art from Arthur Kurwowski. He wrote, here are my questions for the meeting tonight. Please have the minutes posted on the forum for all members to see. There should be no reason to post them as it's part of the Freedom of Information Act and some members cannot come in person. One, statistics of students in, in statistics of students in participation. How many students actually utilize the special needs program in accordance to private tuition? What is the average tuition cost per service rendered per student in the program? What does the private tuition program provide that the OTPT program does not provide? Two, E-rate. What does the E-rate budget entail? How is the E-rate budget calculated and how is it distributed? What services does the E-rate program provide to our school system? Is the E-rate budget reanalyzed every year to obtain the best possible going rate of services? Number three, staff travel. What is the staff travel budget pr uh, provide to students? How is it calculated and dispersed? Does the staff travel budget have limitations and what are they? Who is exempt from utilizing the staff travel budget? Number four, technology salaries. What staff members are compensated at these budgeted salaries? What services do the members who obtain these salaries provide to the school system? Are these positions open competitive or are they contractual? Please obtain answers to these questions as we the taxpayers pay this budget in, into existence and demand to know where the shortcomings of the budget can be brought to light and later retraced to be used for actual better services. Again, there, there should be no issue with posting onto the forum or through my email, the minutes of these questions and responses from many concerned parents and taxpayers of Rosal Park. Thank you for your comments and questions. The public participation portion provides an opportunity for the public to provide comments on the board. This portion is not a question and answer discourse. Specific questions like these should be sent to the superintendent's office. Mr. Greedo, would you like to respond? Yes, uh, Mrs. Kostrom. Uh, first of all, Mr. Um, Kowalski, thank you so much for your questions. We, we appreciate it. Uh, back in March, uh, we had, and, and I wish you could have joined us, and uh, this is just a recommendation for next year. Back in March, we have our public uh, budget workshop where we seek input from the public, and uh, that is something that we welcome. Uh, the public to come in and and certainly uh, give their input. Uh, also, back in April, at the end of April, I believe it was April 25th or 26th, uh, we had our budget presentation. Mrs. Callas uh, presented the budget, but we also had an opportunity, uh, we gave an opportunity for the audience uh, to ask questions and uh, all the questions were answered that, that evening. Uh, as Mrs. Kostrom uh, stated, uh, this is really not the forum for uh, questions and answers. This is a public comment uh, segment. Uh, so please, you're, you're more than welcome to reach out to me uh, tomorrow or anytime uh, on the phone. I'll be more than happy to uh, answer your questions. Uh, in terms of the first section of the, uh, of the email, uh, saying please have the minutes posted on the forum for all members to see. Uh, the minutes are always posted on the district website upon board approval. Uh, immediately following board approval, they are posted. That is a public uh, website that anyone can certainly uh, view those uh, those minutes, and they're they are fully posted there. Uh, Mrs. Callas, I do not know if you have any answers for those budgetary questions at this time. If not. We can always uh, urge Mr. Um, Kowarski to, to call my office. Um, I could try to attempt to answer some of these questions. Uh, so I'll start with the first part about students and participation. Um, the actual numbers I don't have in front of me um, and, and it would be dependent annually based on student IEPs. I mean, do we want to? I mean, I can just... Okay. If this is not a question okay. and answer, it's for comments from the public. We shouldn't be sitting here tonight making a statement prior to this, and now we're answering questions. Okay. Um, the superintendent said that the gentleman can send a 
message to him, anything he'd like to have, give him a call. And the uh, superintendent would be more than happy to answer his questions. Again, we shouldn't be sitting here answering questions if it's not an answering questions period. Certainly, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kowalski, I'm more than happy to uh, answer any questions. If you can just call my office or you can email me directly if that's, that's, uh, that's more convenient. Thank you. Mrs. Callis, are there any other correspondences? Yes, we received a second one from Cindy Mago, uh, living or resident from 433 Walnut Street. Uh, good evening. My question is in regards to mask requirements for next school year. I will have two students in the district schools in the fall, and I would like to know the board's stance on required masks next year. Our students are able to play sports, enjoy the town parks and playgrounds together and socialize with friends, all mask free. As of Friday, they will also be able to shop, go to the movies and eat in restaurants mask free. However, the moment they enter a school, they must have a face covering. Children have been affected the least by this virus, yet they suffered the most, uh, both mentally, physically, and educationally from this pandemic. I believe everyone should have a choice to send their child into school with a mask if they choose, but we should also be allowed to send them without one. While our governor has said the masks may continue next year, other school districts are stepping up and speaking out against continued mask requirements. With that said, what will this school board do to give parents back their right to decide what is best for their children? No, it's not. Uh, Ms. Gosman, if I may, may answer here. Uh, the governor has announced, and it continues to be one of his orders, that masks must be worn in schools uh, as well as medical uh, centers and so forth. So the board really cannot go against the governor's orders. So as of now, uh, that is something that we will continue to to have uh, the masks worn in the school buildings. If it changes, obviously information will be sent out. Uh, any guidance that comes from the Department of Education or the Department of Health or the governor's office uh, will certainly be sent out to all the parents as well. Thank you, Mr. Garrido. If there is no more correspondences and no more new business from the dais, I'd like to have a motion for adjournment. I'll make the motion. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next scheduled board meeting will be held on Tuesday, June 8th, 2021 at 7 p.m. The board meeting will be held right here at the Rosal Park High School Auditorium. Have a good long weekend. Stay safe. Stay cool. See you in June.